Hi everyone. Um, I'll be moderating the panel today, but before we introduce, I introduce myself. I'd like to introduce all of our um, all of our artists. Um, first up, we have Anne Simone. Uh, Anne, if you could uh, raise your hand. Um, whose recent book, The Empress Sixtasis, is out from Fanagraphics. Jan Kebby, who's uh, also who um, painted, illustrated um, the structure is rotten, comrade from Fanagraphics, also published earlier this year. Molly Mendoza, whose book Skip has recently been released by No Brow, um, and the worst from Shortbox, both here at the show today. And I, I believe Molly, you're signing your book after the panel. All right, all right. Um, uh, Runet, who's um, done some a lot of self-published work and also has uh, Gigant, Gigant um, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Ad House in 2015, and then Ida um, and and her book Lonely Journey, um, published by Cobalt in 2018. Um, and my name is Alex Hoffman. I'm a comics writer, critic, editor, publisher um, at Field Mouse Press, Sequential State, and I also have bylines at the Comics M&T and the Comics Journal. So I wanted to start today with a group of artists who are about as diverse as they come, right? Um, the work that you all do is very, very different from line work to painting to what look like pastels or watercolors. And I wanted to start the conversation with all of you just talking about what you think about creating style or choosing how you represent ideas on the page. And maybe we can start down with Runet and walk, walk this way. And then um, we'll, uh, we'll just kind of let the conversation flow. Um, and just as some uh, housekeeping before we get started, um, we'll have discussion at the end. We've got about 10 minutes of the presentation for questions for the artists. When you're asking questions, please make sure you're asking to the person um, or to the whole group. So if you have a question specifically for Molly, ask um, Molly. Um, that would be helpful to make sure that we get the right person answering your question. All right, thank you. Does this work? Yeah. <laughs> I need to stretch. Uh. Um, yeah, so the question was about style and how I got to it. Uh, my style is uh, sort of a sketched out, uh, not very clean style. Uh, the characters usually have uh, wiggly legs and, and arms. Yeah, there we go. I, um, and, uh, and it's very colorful. I, uh, uh, my style came to me uh, in, a, in a kind of a weird way. Uh, I went to a drawing school where I learned the classical way of drawing uh, with anatomy and everything, uh, you know, the, the sort of Renaissance kind of drawing. Uh, and I had a teacher there who uh, taught me uh, about uh, uh, Rubens and the way he sketched out drawings. Uh, how everything is sort of uh, lines go into each other, and there's a rhythm in a line. So then I realized uh, that's how I draw when I sketch people. Uh, you know, when you're out in the city and you watch people and you sketch them, and that worked very well for me because uh, things could just sort of flow out of me. Uh, so everything I do is about rhythm. Um, yeah, I don't know. If, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think there's a real dynamism to your work. It, it, it jumps off the page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I also think in terms of rhythm about coloring. Uh, so uh, characters change color all the time, uh, and uh, the background change color, and it's all based on rhythm and, and emotion. Uh, um, yeah, so everything I do is about rhythm. It's like music. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, hi. Can you hear me? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I also kind of have a similar approach in some ways. Um, it's kind of funny, but before uh, I started using um, ink wash, like Sumi ink, to create my illustrations, I often would draw using just micron pens and Sharpies. I would carry around a bag of Sharpies with me everywhere and um, would just like draw on the spot. Uh, they, these drawings they took forever. 
Um, it wasn't until uh, you know I was kind of experimenting in art school and trying different mediums and approaches. Uh, I studied photography for a bit. I also um, even took some installation classes. I did video projection for a minute. Uh, I wasn't very good at it. Um, but it all kind of lended itself to like looking at the way that I was drawing and trying to come at it from different approaches. Um, whether I was gonna go about it very, very cinematically or rhythmically, um, that it kind of depended on the project or what it needed. And I became more open to the idea of, you know, my drawing doesn't always have to be with these specific tools. It could be accomplished in whatever means necessary to make it be done. And um, so with Skip, I was definitely coming up off of uh, working on The Worst, and The Worst also has a similar um, uh, Sumi ink wash, like, and then digital color process. Um, and I kind of came upon that when I was working on my thesis project, uh, Voyage, which um, is a visual retelling of the uh, Voyager 1 space mission. And uh, it's separated in four chapters, and each chapter is defined by color. And the images flow throughout rhythmically to uh, through these colors, through these themes, through the story. And um, I think that if I didn't do that and achieve a way of thinking like that um, back in 2015, I don't know that I would have been able to do the worst or would have been able to do skip. But it's that like long-term kind of progression. So yeah, it's, does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah, and I think one of the things that is really fascinating about Skip and the progression from the worst to Skip is seeing you work in these layered panels um, mm -hmm. and how that kind of kind of almost explodes a little bit in Skip. And I was wondering if you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so with the layering in Skip, um, I. I'm definitely a very emotional artist. Um, I get like really weepy and I get really into it. Um, I'm definitely like trying to find a tone when uh, when I'm working. And so when working on Skip, you know, sometimes the drawing would be just all these layers of just like Sumi ink and drawing and drawing. And even if I made a mistake, it didn't matter because I would take that into Photoshop and then from there like kind of carve out, put things on top of it, put things underneath it, make it seem intentional, like it always was meant to be there. Um, because I don't want to lose that initial like spontaneity at all. Um, and I don't want to lose that feeling that I had when I did the first drawing. So um, even with the example that's up now, like there were a lot of errors that were in that initial like warp drawing underneath the cup, but, um, but I didn't want to lose any of that but instead it's just I'm kind of like gilding it a little bit with other elements um to make it seem like oh yeah I totally meant to do that you couldn't convince me that there are any errors <laughs> <laughs> does, that, does that answer the question yeah, yeah okay absolutely. cool um yeah I was educated at the design school in Copenhagen and I studied illustration and I always wanted to do children's books, um, and I've never made comics before, so Lonely Journey is my first comic, and I have just been trying to experiment like with the style that I already had, which was like pencil drawings, and then trying to combine it with something more digital, because this was, um, it's a story about a girl who's playing video games, and I wanted to have this like, the digital versus the analog um, as a like the kind of the style of the book. So I've been using different techniques, both um, like ink uh, layers that I color by hand, and then the pencil drawings, and then coloring it on the computer, and trying to blend the different things. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a, a beautiful beautiful transitions in your work where we see your main character in the pencil drawings, beautiful pencil drawings, and then flip to this lyrical painted painterly kind of quality and I was wondering how did you come across that what what was the genesis for that idea I think it was just that I tried to think about it before I started drawing how I could show this transition from yeah from the real life or like the I don't know how you say like her everyday life and then this the world inside the computer game and to mix these two things I 
I needed it to be very different, so I made everything that happens in the girl Anna's everyday life is in black and white, and then everything inside the, the game is in color. So a way to show it was easy to like combine these two things. Very good, thank you. I will try to speak in English. <laughs> Sorry if you don't understand anything. Uh, uh, I, um, I drew uh, with uh, ink, China ink, and uh, I don't know the name of uh, un premier, un premier, ball pen, mm -hmm. uh, for 15 years, I think, now. And uh, I did uh, art school um, where I, uh, I, I studied uh, uh, photography, uh, um, I paint, I'm painting too, uh, I paint too, but uh, uh, comics is for me uh, the best um, things because I just want to write uh, stories and uh, the text is very important for, for me and comics is, uh, is the best way. And um, I love books too, I, ju uh, I, I wanted to, to do books uh, uh, with uh, serigraphy for example. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, but um, now uh, I did. Uh, I only uh, draw with uh, with ink. But uh, sometimes I want to change. <laughs> uh, maybe um, I, I, I've got uh, in the Song of Aglaya my, my books uh, published by Photographics uh, a, a universe um, um, invented, completely invented, a pays tout inventé. A completely invented universe. Uh, uh, and uh, maybe uh, I, uh, I will try to do uh, some uh, tableau, uh, a tableau, uh, big um, tableau. Uh, tableau? Ah, it's a tableau, mm. you see? Right. <laughs> big tableau, but with the same characters. And one of the things that I notice about your work is how meticulous it is and how how thoughtfully put together in order to elicit emotional moments and humor. Sorry. Chaque dessin est très précis pour évoquer l'émotion, l'humeur. Il est précis pour tout le monde. Ah, thank you. C'est aussi mon, mon dessin est aussi pas mal inspiré de gravures anciennes et j'ai un, un dessin qui est très fourni donc c'est pour ça que je travaille sur le noir et blanc aussi. Uh, so and someone's uh, inspiration is from the old uh, like pen and ink but also the uh, the etching like Albert Durer and mm. stuff like that or even uh, Gustave Doré. Mm -hmm. And that's very evident. You can see it, and, and it's beautiful. Um, and then finally, yeah. Hi. Um, so I guess my overall approach uh, about drawing is a lot influenced by the sketching. Uh, I do. I did a lot of sketching at school. Uh, I still try to, but I have less time now. And uh, well, it's not my. I mean, it's my first uh, comic book. Um, I did several books before, but that's a, that's a big one. Too. It's more like uh, it's more than 300 pages. So I'd say that in that approach, I, like you can see, it's like very sketchy. Uh, it was not my text. Uh, it was written by a, a, an author called uh, Viken Berberian. And so the way the text came to me, it was mostly dialogues, a lot of dialogues. So I, I had to find a way to, to, to fit all the text in the pages. And I didn't want to spend like three years on the book, uh, not because not by laziness, but I don't know. I wanted to have a, like a, some kind of a rough approach. Um, so you can see, it's not there is no like there is no sketch, then ink, then putting colors on it. It's very rough. Uh, and it's very it's very direct. That's also something that I think matched the text of Viken, and uh, that's why I had this kind of approach. But it's pretty similar to what I usually do in terms of uh, commission illustrations, books, is just that this book is very, it's even rougher. Because I, like I said, I, 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 think, I think what said Molly, uh, she said some stuff that I'm 
pretty in agreement with the fact that you you also adapt uh, your style and your visual approach depending on the uh, depending on the book. Uh, so I'd say if I did a new comic book, I would probably not have the same approach at all. Mm. And one of the things specifically about the structure as Rotten Comrade is how um, through m the missing pieces, it becomes more beautiful because you, can, the, you almost have the space to put in as the reader the things that are missing or are left you know, to the imagination. Well, I, I think it's a, it's a, it could be a good example of what not to do in terms of, <laughs> in terms of comic books because, uh, um, well, you, you would have to read it, but a lot of things don't make sense. I mean, it's not a classical narrative book where you understand from the beginning to the end, everything makes sense. It's a bit, yeah, it's a bit rough. And, um, well, it's the first, first time I was uh, working with a, with, a, with a text that was not mine. Um, and so I'd say the text is very talkative, but, and so, so are my drawings. Yeah. So, you know, it's like a, sometimes it balances, and sometimes it's maybe a bit too much. Yeah. But, you're tr I mean, what, I mean what, you're, what you're saying, um, I think I agree with, is the fact that it's a bit imperfect, but at the same time, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. the, because they're like, yeah, they yeah. match. They match, they, they match. yeah, yeah. Very wonderful. Um, and I, I think that's a good place to move to my next kind of general question, uh, which is about um, the creative process in general. Um, uh, Jan, for this work, you had to in, essentially interpret dialogue and turn that into a, a comic. I wanted to ask the panel, um, is your creative process, do you feel it's more structured? Do you feel it's more organic? Um, does that, does that even, do those dichotomies even make sense? Does that comparison even make sense? It, yeah. um, is that, is your process different on each book or is it generally the same throughout your works? All right, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, um, my process uh, actually changes pretty much every book I make uh, and at the same time stays the same. But every time I make a new book, uh, I try to become a little bit better uh, and a little bit more efficient. Uh, so I want to sort of learn from the mistakes I did last time. Uh, um, for instance, now what I do is, is I, I, um, I do my thumbnails on the computer. Uh, so I do them digitally. Uh, still drawing them very, very tiny, so I won't be able to make details and, 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 and spend too much time on them. Uh, and then I just blow them up. I, I scale them up to the size uh, of A3. Uh, and I print it out very light in the CN. Uh, and then I just uh, draw directly, uh, ink directly on top of that, analog. Um, so in that way, uh, I can maybe spend a third of the time sketching it out, because uh, I don't have to do that. I mean, my style is also sort of a sketched style. Uh, so many of the processes are uh, sort of uh, uh, going together uh, uh, in, in a weird way. Um, and in the end, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I've been more efficient than the last time. Uh, uh, this book was my, my debut book uh, about five years ago. Um, and uh, I worked more uh, in the idea of traditional uh, because I thought, well, if I have to do a comic book, I need to do it in the way that uh, everyone else is doing it, uh, which is kind of weird. So, so I, 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 drew, I drew, uh, drew the sketch by hand, uh, and I struggled a lot. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and also the dialogue, I was writing that by hand, uh, hand littering and stuff like that. And in the end, I had to sort of change it digitally because it looked horrible. I, I mean, I can't handle it. Uh, I can't even read it myself afterwards. Uh, so, so I had to sort of erase all that and, and make new bubbles as well and, and do that digitally. Uh, so I could, have, I could have made that book in half the time 
uh, if I uh, if I only had the experience. Um, yeah, but that's the greatest thing about comics. I mean, learning something for every book I make. Uh, that's uh, brilliant. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I know for my process, I definitely tend to have um, a bunch of images in mind that I've been sketching or working on. And then I literally kind of like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna write everything to get to that drawing, to get to that moment mm. that I have in my mind. Um, uh, for the worst, it was about, you know, like falling out. Um, I was going through a falling out. I was thinking about it a lot. Um, and for some reason, these swimmers, fish, sharks, all that came to mind. And then for Skip, I, I always had, I, I was going through feelings of anxiety and depression. Um, and I used Skip as a way to kind of navigate that by, you know, having this internal, um, like, back and forth between these characters as they're getting to know each other. And they both uh, kind of manifested in these, like, really, really specific images. Like, in Skip, there's this image where it's Bloom's face, and they're, like, looking out, and this, uh, the, sh the boat is cutting across their face in the water. Um, and I knew that I wanted to draw that since the beginning. Um, and I literally made the book so I would get to those moments. Or there's a part where Bloom is crying and there's all these big bubbly ghibli tears and I wanted that drawing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I think that there's like these visual themes here too. It's, it's the birds, it's the eyes watching, um, these like themes of pressure, color changes, mood changes. Um, right now I'm developing something uh, and uh, right, I think it's gonna be like, toxic nostalgia, cats, and fire. So how am I gonna draw that? Um, but I've been sketching it a lot. So I, I'm, really looking, I'm really looking forward to like getting into this process. But then I also um, will do, and, and working on that, it's very, very organic. Like my, my, my thumbnails are a nightmare. Um, and I even just sending them to my editor, like I'm sure they were just like, okay, Molly, I don't understand what you're showing me, but I'm gonna believe in you. Um, I'd have to give a lot more clarity. I do though like receiving um, work, like thumbnail work, thumbnails to work on. You know, I, I like working with other people. That's what also why I do editorial illustration. Um, uh, my partner uh, Sage Howard and I, we both work on a comic called Singer's Cave, and um, they give me the uh, thumbnails and the writing, and then from there, like I can kind of interpret them how I want. We kind of go back and forth, and I also enjoy that process too, of collaboration and working with somebody else. Um, I'm going through it now with someone else's, with a children's book, that, some children's books that I'm working on um, at the moment. And it's, and this is an even more so a different process because like that person isn't like right in the room with me, you know, like you can't like go back and forth. So I'm kind of learning what that structure is like. But I think I'm also like learning how to be a little bit clearer with my thumbnails and with my writing. So um, I'm going to hopefully learn a lot from that and from Skip. Molly, it sounds like your your experience with the, at least the children's book authorship is the same as your kind of uh, Jan's kind of um, experience with uh, the structure is rotten comrade, and to a certain extent, um, and your your work on the, uh, the the books you did for No Brow, the biographies. And, mm -hmm. um, so could um, so I, I don't want to jump over Ida, but I'm gonna, I mean I'd like you two to speak to that if you could. Yes, uh, uh, it's the same thing uh, with, uh, for the um, illustrations, biography. I work with a scenarist, Corinne Maya, and uh, I'm, uh, I just do uh, the drawing. Doc. It's very different uh, that uh, these books um, uh, published by Fantagraphics. Uh, for, for this one, I can uh, start. Uh, I, am, I have a sketchbook, uh, uh, yeah, and I, um, I write uh, a lot of information. Um, uh, on it, uh, like um, I don't know, uh, this character will be the lover or this other character, but, but um, with, with nonsense. <laughs> and uh, after I've got um, a big, uh, big bazaar, <laughs> big, big bazaar, <laughs> and uh, it's uh, the the part. Um, I pre uh, ah, c la, ce que je préfère, c'est après essayer de démêler tout ça. After it all, trying to uh, unravel it. Yeah, uh, but uh, uh, I never uh, write the scenario precisely. Uh, 
Uh, and after, uh, when I have got that, um, I, um, I write a story and uh, divide it by chapters. And uh, I, um, sh uh, um, I, um, I, I write a, sh a title for, uh, for the chapter. And I've got the skelet of my story. Uh, and after, I, um, I, uh, I, uh, I write uh, dialogues uh, with, uh, 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 with um, improvisation. I improvise mm -hmm. that. And uh, after, <laughs> uh, I think, ah, OK, this, this chapter will be uh, in uh, 10 pages. This chapter is eight pages. And um, uh, it's a story of fiction, but um, always inspired by the real life. Like uh, this, uh, Empress Sixties is uh, inspired by a, a true story of uh, Empress uh, Chinese. Um, my, um, um, the, the, the song of Aglaya uh, talk about feminism. Uh, my uh, my books, my dernier, non, mon dernier livre, <laughs> my my last book in France uh, is talking about uh, capitalism, for example. So I've got a, 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 a sujet global. global yes. This, uh, well, and but for the biography with the scenarist, she, uh, she, she, I've got uh, uh, all the uh, everything is uh, writing uh, by advance. Uh, but I, I, I have the liberty to do uh, everything I want for um, uh, for the la mise en scène. So, uh, mise, mise en scène. I, I do the storyboard uh, with a total uh, freedom. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Still talking about structure and uh, structure organic? and and collaborating with someone who may be distant. Well, I think um, so about that question about between uh, structuring and organized um, organic approach. I think it's kind of a drawing and by sense doing a book is a bit of a back and forth, you know, between. Um, in intellectualizing uh, the process, you know, when you draw, sometimes you you have some kind of automatism, and I think you said that before. But when you start a book, most of the time it's because you get like one precise drawing you like, or you know, it's starting from there. So you start from a drawing, or from something, and then you push it a bit more. Then you start thinking. Then you go back to drawing. Then you go back to thinking. So it's a bit of back and forth. Uh, I mean, for me, but I think most of the time, yeah, for for, for drawing, drawing. And most of creative, creative process, I, I, I guess, uh, have that relationship uh, between structuring and uh, you know letting go. Um, and but for a book, it, after that, it really depends on yeah, what how many pages, how many, uh, what subject we're working with. Uh, like I, sp I spent as much time on this comic book that I spent on a on this forty page. A children book, mm -hmm. really depending on the approach and what you want to, you know, convey. Mm -hmm. I guess. I see. Um, Ida, going back to you, uh, do you, when you, when you made this initial book, was the structure, was the creative process very structured or was it very organic? It was very organic, definitely not very structured. And as I said before, I never made comics before, so. I actually I had no like teaching or anything, so I've just been doing it the way I wanted to do it. I didn't know any rules. Um, and this one, Lonely Journey, it's uh, like dedicated to my sister, my younger sister. So I didn't have like a full story. I just had some elements and some scenes that I wanted to be in the book or in the story. And as you also said, like making some drawings or like having some sketches you want to have as um, like important things in the, in the story. And I try to put them together in a storyline and make little um, like post-its with uh, different important things that has to be a part of it. And then I just made it very intuitively, like started to draw some final pages actually in almost in the beginning. And then it kept changing, so it was developing for a very long time before it 
became what it is. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. But I learned a lot from this, I think. Uh, next time I would like to be a little more structured and um, to make more like a storyboard and the dummy and all of these things that are helpful, I think. Yeah, but I didn't know about this, so it, it was very organic. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of learning as you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like Runa said, uh, learning something new with each project and trying to take that forward, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all of the work that we are, are talking about today generally engages with other art forms of some kind, either peripherally or very, uh, very um, specifically. Um, whether that's uh, sculpture or um, uh, whether it's video games or it's music. Um, and I wanted to hear your thoughts on how other art forms influences your creative process um, when you make comics. Uh, okay. Um, as, I, as I mentioned before uh, with my line work that, that everything is a rhythm, uh, I, Music has a, a big role uh, for me in my work. I, um, particularly early on when I try to do the conceptual stuff, I, uh, I usually start, I mean, I have the idea and then I have the manuscript and then I build upon that very early in the manuscript. Or maybe I only have one page of manuscript where the, the concept and the idea is there. Uh, then I actually start making conceptual pages where I experiment with uh, the amount of detail uh, that I want in this story that will suit it. Um, so uh, when I do that, I think a lot about music. Uh, I have I've made a story uh, called Death Safe, uh, which unfortunately isn't published yet in English. Uh, hopefully we'll have it soon. Uh, but it's about these uh, teenage kids in a city, uh, and uh, it's in the mid '90s. And, uh, they're very—they um, uh, really like to play pinball machines in the local arcade. I, um, so doing that one, I, I just basically listened to a lot of uh, the good music uh, I remember from back back from the '90s. Uh, there's a lot of horrible music as well, but. Uh, uh, but uh, that just put me in a, in a right mood uh, and, and, uh, and kept me uh, making that sort of uh, true grit story I wanted. Uh, and, and I worked a lot more dirty for that story uh, because uh, the story is a little bit more harsh, it's a little bit more real. Um, and uh, usually I would work in ink, uh, also with microns. Uh, and uh, but for this one, I chose to work with uh, a pencil, and uh, and a soft pencil uh, as well. So I I would uh, I just I simply couldn't uh, avoid smearing the pages and making a lot of mistakes, and uh, basically making it ugly, uh, uh, because I wanted it to be uh, sort of ugly to uh, fit fit the story. Uh, um, I got a little off track there, I think. Uh, but but uh, yeah, um, music uh, plays a lot in everything I do. Uh, yeah. When you sent the files for a death save, all I could think was, I wish this was in English so I could read it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I, I too am really influenced by music. Uh, I have like songs that I'll like, listen to on repeat to get myself in the mood. I think for Skip, one of the big ones, I was listening to Chastity Belt, um, there's, and then uh, Mitski, always. Like, I was just listening to like, a lot of like, fuzzy girl like band kind of music while I was working on that. Um, also, uh, the, the swooping kind of like landscapes and like the, how kind of clay-like and like amorphous everything is. I'm, I'm really into uh, Georgia O'Keeffe uh, landscape paintings. And I think that that also, with me living in Arizona for when I was in high school, um, some of those images and those visuals are just kind of stuck in my mind. It's kind of how I just organically work. Um, and the last thing was just like anything I was consuming. Uh, like there's literally a section where it's everything's like a, it's like a city that's kind of like on fire and there's a giant and they're holding like this city and, and there's, um, there's a war happening and uh, it's very dark. 
Um, and it was, I literally drew that because all I wanted to do when I was working on my comic was go keep playing Dark Souls with my sister. <laughs> so I, I was like, I was like, oh my God, if I just like keep going, I can, I can go and I can play Dark Souls like right now. Like I just want to get back with that DLC. So, um, yeah. And it, it just kind of finds it, its way in there and it's literally written a thumbnail, like abstract. That's it. It's like, it'll be there, whatever it is, castle. And like, but I don't know what it looks like until I'm actually engaging with other media at the same time. And that's really, in that, in the book, that's one of the beats that is, for me, was really emotional. I, I found myself uh, getting, uh, cr crying uh, because of it. Because it was, it was so heartbreaking in that moment. And knowing that the two characters um, are going to move to someplace else, and they're not going to be in that space for very long. So in that sense, it kind of disappears you know it's you're not ever going to get to go back to that space and see it resolve yeah yeah um that that was definitely uh you know i wanted to stay as long as possible in all those spaces mm -hmm. but with time and my own physical ability and like with uh the pacing of the story and you know just there were a lot of like, I, I wish I could stay in each one. Like, mm. I really do. Like, I especially that world, I even, like, kept making parts where uh, my, my D&D campaign, I literally inserted them in, and they were, like, in there mm -hmm. fighting and stuff, and then they were, like, no, but I was, like, get rid of that. Why is that here? And I was, like, I don't just let me live. Like, I just want to be <laughs> one. And, uh, but, uh, you know, rightfully so, that was good. it was a good choice. It didn't do anything for the story. But, but I could stay there forever. I really could in any of the places and just keep investigating whatever that place makes me feel. Um, so I'm glad that that resonated with you too. With that part. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm very like inspired by music, um, especially not in this one. It's been about the video games mm -hmm. because, it, as I said, it was dedicated for my sister, and that she was playing a lot of video games, and I never did, so I didn't really know why she spent so much time on this and what was so interesting about it for her. And I think also the book shows that I don't know really how video games work. And <laughs> so I just wanted to make my own interpretation visually and mix it a little bit with um, also board games. So I've been using it in the way I've been building up the, the pages by making the panels look a little bit like in a board game mm -hmm. more than in a video game. So I've just been like, playing around with, with this way of um, building the pages. Um, yeah, so that's been like a big part of it, also playing video games with my sister mm -hmm. to try and see like some of the elements that are important in it and how it works. Um, but that was specifically for this story. Yeah, not in general. <laughs> The, you bringing up board games to me was, that's a light bulb moment for me because I didn't, I, looking at the, the pages, it now makes so much more sense that you were drawing from that as well. Mm -hmm. I thought that's, that's fascinating. I think the page you showed first, the one with a lot of blue and, and ink and in the forest, it's uh, it? another one. That one. I think this one shows a little more what I mean about the board game, um, and then having elements of like the lives um, mm -hmm. and yeah. the, the points or the score. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the, I, I uh, very inspired by uh, by the Beatles one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, uh, in my comics, uh, characters uh, with the name are uh, Henri Dehors and uh, Mr. Kite uh, for um, the album uh, Sunshine and Peppers. And when uh, when I was a child, um, this album um, uh, I love I love <laughs> this album because uh, it's a story. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, um, in music. Uh, I, I sorry because I love Beatles. I I listen uh, all their uh, songs uh, <laughs> since a long time ago, and uh, my English is horrible. I don't understand. <laughs> 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 Normally, <laughs> I, uh, 
I should be bilingual, but no. <laughs> and um, so we don't send the paper, but I think that do um, uh, comics is is like to. Uh, it's like cooking, cooking, mm. and um, I uh, I have a, a lot of uh, ingredients like uh, the Beatles, um, the Greek mythology, um, publicity, uh, uh, a, a lot of things, and I and I uh, I, I, I put uh, <laughs> all that in a shaker, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and the <laughs> here's the results. So um, uh, yes, with, uh, for the music, it's a, it's the Beatles. Um, um, but I, I never uh, listen um, anything when I when I walk uh, or, or uh, for the concentration. And uh, I uh, uh, inspired uh, uh, by uh, the, the, the Bronte sisters too, mm -hmm. and literal, uh, literature um, like um, Zola, Les Rougon Macquart, because I, um, I want to do uh, 10 books with the same universe mm -hmm. and uh, with a, a lot of um, um, uh, relation. Uh, Sorry, en fait, je voudrais qu'il y ait plusieurs livres et que toutes les histoires se recoupent sur plusieurs générations. Et ça, on le retrouve, par exemple, dans Balzac ou Zola. So just like Emile Zola or Balzac, to have it as like a family history that the books intertwine the family timelines, the generations, what intertwines, even like Kevin Follett with Pillars of the Earth or Edward Rutherford with Ruska or any of his books. But I don't want to compare it me to Zola or Balzac. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not the, it's not the same. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> well, in terms of um, making references to existing um, things like uh, sculptures, music, whatever, inside a, a book, uh, I think it's always good because it creates uh, layers, especially in comic books where as you can see, most of the time, it's just, a, I think, a relation, relationship between text and images. Most of the time, in frames and bubbles. So it, it's a, it's just, it, it is a strict approach most of the time. So I think to have uh, yeah, different uh, input and exist, making reference to existing objects, uh, art history, whatever, it's a, yeah, it creates some kind of uh, depth in, in time, inside mm -hmm. the thing. And, well, in our case, uh, the, the story is happening in uh, Yerevan, so it's in, in Armenia. And, uh, well, there's a lot of sculptures, but I took a lot of liberty with that. Mm -hmm. I just, like, Googled everything. I've never been there, in fact. Uh, so it's a fake uh, view of the place. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I took a lot of uh, references, used a lot of uh, Eastern sculptures and put them in. And, well, it seems everybody spoke, to, spoke about uh, music. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I do listen to music while uh, drawing, obviously. But I mostly use, listen to something a bit more, you know, be very repetitive, mm -hmm. a bit obs obsessional. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, to be, to be, in, the, mm -hmm. to be in the flow. Um, if we have questions from the audience, if you could please go ahead and step forward to the microphones on either side. Um, so that way we can get your questions with the uh, Q&A time. While I'm waiting for them, I wanted to kind of approach the idea of sculpture specifically in your work, because I think there are two things that are the most defined in the structure as Rotten Comrade. That's the sculptures and the wrecking balls. Mm -hmm. And I wanted you to, if you could talk about that. Well, I think the, the reason the, the, the sculptures are, are a bit more refined, uh, compared to anything else in the book is because obviously I draw them from uh, photos. So you're kind of mm -hmm. uh, trying to do the, 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 the rendering of the, of the thing to be a bit respectful mm -hmm. towards the uh, existing works. Yeah. Uh, and the working boards, I don't know, I, I guess they're like kind of, a, of, a, of an anchor in the book, mm -hmm. like uh, visually something that helped me a lot to construct the book visually because l from the few pages you saw, like I said, there is no like, there is not the, the, the usual uh, restraint you can find in a comic book, which is uh, the frame that tells you that the moment after is a new time, and the bubbles with, uh, in indicating you who is speaking. So I guess I, I needed that kind of uh, recurrency, that kind of uh, reappearing elements mm -hmm. to keep some kind of a, of track in a not so clear narrative uh, thing. Yeah. 
Fascinating. Thank you. All right, it looks like we've got a question over here. Uh, first, thank you all. This is really great. Um, for those, I know a few of you mentioned it, but for anyone who uh, works especially specifically with writers uh, and collaborating with things, what is one of the most important things um, that you use to communicate and make sure everything goes smoothly when you're uh, collaborating with someone on a project? So whoever, for the, for the room, again, uh, if you're collaborating with someone, uh, someone who, what, what, what process is used to make the collaboration smooth? Is that right? Yeah. Um, for, the main, for the most part uh, of, uh, of uh, my work, uh, I've written them myself. Uh, but right now, I'm working on a book with an author. Uh, so that's the first time for me. And I was very nervous about that uh, because I work uh, super messy. Uh, and, and half of my idea and um, uh, concept uh, exists only inside my head. Uh, I'm not very structured that way. Uh, so uh, I was very nervous about uh, how this uh, collaboration would uh, would go forward, uh, but simply uh, uh, I just thumbnail thumbnailed. Uh, we broke up the book in chapters, uh, approximately ten uh, pages per chapter, and then I thumbnailed those out, sent them to him, and his first response was he couldn't he couldn't tell anything uh, what was going on. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I realized that uh, I have to do sort of um, more detailed uh, thumbnails. Uh, and I learned a lot by that. Uh, uh, but at the same time, he was super trust, uh, trust, uh, trusting in me. Uh, so sometimes he couldn't really tell what was going on, but uh, uh, he said, okay, I'm, I'm just going to believe that this is going in the right direction. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I would say uh, honesty, um, especially when, you know, you work in a different process and they work in a different process. They're going to want to go at a certain pace. Maybe you don't go at that pace. So I think being really upfront and clear about what your boundaries are and what your limits are, I think is important from, like, the get-go, if you can. And if something comes up where it's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a meltdown and this is all on me and I can't really do this right now, just say it, just tell them that because you're working together. So um, I hope that answers your question. And then unfortunately, I have to wrap us up. We've, I would love to keep you here for another couple hours, but I, uh, I think everyone would get a little mad at me. So um, again, I wanna thank all of the artists for being here today. Uh, it was such a lovely conversation. Thank you so much.